And it means that their love is their bond of the relationship. It's what keeps them together. It's the glue of their relationship, their love. They are devoted to one another because of their love for one another. And so also, that's what we need when it comes to the things of God. It's that kind of love we need when it comes to God. Jesus was asked, which is the greatest commandment? And he declared in Mark 12, 30, here's what he said. He said, the greatest commandment is this. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the greatest commandment. Amen. Amen. That just about covers it. If you're loving God under all those conditions, you're running well. We need to ask ourselves, when was the last time I loved God like that? With all my heart, with all my soul, with all my strength, with all my mind, with all my being. We need that kind of love not only for God, but also for the Word of God. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I love this book. Every January 1st, I challenge myself to read through this book. I don't always finish that goal, but I'm digging into the Word. Marking off books of the Bible. Trying to fall in love with this book all over again. Can I challenge you today? Fall in love with the Bible. God's Word. And it will transform your life. Maybe you can only read through half of it. Maybe you'll only get through the New Testament. Whatever it is. Just soak it up. I mean, listen to some of these verses that were written by the psalmist. Psalm 119, verse 97. Oh, how I love thy law. It is my meditation all the day. Psalm 119, verse 140. Thy word is very pure. Therefore, thy servant loveth it. Verse 165. Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. I am resolved to be more devoted to the things of God. It's interesting that this time of year you'll see these books called daily devotional books. That's because they're meant to be read every day. That word devoted is a good word. Pick yourself up a daily devotional book and it'll help you be devoted to the things of God. Listen. <clears throat> Couples that are having trouble in their marriage will sometimes renew their vows to each other. And it's the first step in falling in love again. And if you're here today and your love for God has somehow cooled off, if you finished this past year flat spiritually with little desire for the things of God, it might be a good idea to start this year by renewing your vows to God. Just rededicate your life to serving Him and loving Him. The words aren't important. He's looking at your heart. Dear God, I've been away from you. Lord, this has been a bad year. I've had my, my share. I've come before you and rededicate my life as best I can, Lord. I'm going to try to live for you. Amen. Number three, I resolve to be more disciplined concerning my walk with God. Many New Year's resolutions revolve around getting back in shape, eating better, eating less, breaking some bad habit, Developing some new habit. Stop drinking. Stop doing drugs. Maybe stop smoking cigarettes. Stop eating junk food. Whatever it may be. But as stated earlier, many folks give up on their resolution because they're not determined to get her done. It doesn't mean enough to them to make the needed changes in their life. But a second reason why many fail is no self-discipline. Now those who live their lives in darkness. They have no idea that the reason why they keep failing in their efforts is the fact that their flesh is simply out of control. Their flesh is calling the shots. Their flesh is making a mess of their lives. Romans 8, 13. For if you live according to your corrupt nature, if you live according to the flesh, you're going to die. But if by the Spirit of God you put to death the deeds of the body, Old bodily habits. The Bible says you'll live. Listen, this isn't rocket scientists here. Any doctor will tell you the same thing. When you're young, 
you can get away with a whole lot of wrong eating, living wrong, doing wrong, running with the wrong crowd. You can get, get away with a lot. Put your bodies through a whole lot. But eventually, those bad habits start to catch up with you and begin to take a toll on your body physically. Things you used to do, you can't do no more. I knew people stay up all night howling at the moon, get up with maybe 10 minutes of sleep and go to work the next day. Try doing that when you get a little bit older. Can't be done. It gets harder and harder to get through each day, especially if you find yourself hung up on something. Whether it's food or drugs or booze or even coffee and cigarettes. Whatever it may be, when you get to the point where you can't get through the day without it. Becca had a toothache. She said, I know I shouldn't drink coffee, but I, I just got to have my morning cup of coffee. That pain would go away for a little bit. She'd take that first sip of coffee, and that was it. Mm. I didn't have it today. <laughs> didn't have it today? That's good. I made some over here if you want some. It's already made in the pot. But you don't know the sinking feeling when you get up in the morning and you shuffle over to the cabinet and you look and you realize somebody done, somebody done made the last pot of coffee and didn't tell you. Uh -huh. I'm not drinking that decaf stuff. I might as well not waste my time. I'm kidding, but I'm also serious. When something's got the best of you, you got troubles. You got a problem. You may end up in a hospital at the ER where the doctor will fly out and tell you, listen, I'm going to give it to you straight. If you keep doing this, you're going to die. If you don't lose some weight, you're going to die. If you keep smoking, you're going to die. That's pretty clear. The Bible has already told us that truth, and we don't need medical advice to figure it out. Romans 8, 6. For the mind that's set on the flesh is death, but the mind focused on the spirit is life yeah. and peace. Yeah. So there it is. We have a choice to make. We can start this year looking to live. I'd like to stick around for a while. Or we can just continue doing wrong things, bad behavior, and not be surprised when the rug gets pulled out from us. Whether we realize it or not, there's a battle going on. A daily struggle, a tug of war between our flesh and the Holy Spirit which dwells within us. And the one that wins and controls our life is the one that you're feeding, whichever one it is. If you're feeding the flesh, the flesh is going to win. But if you're feeding yourself on the things of God, then the Spirit's going to win. Turn over to Galatians chapter 5. Great passage of scripture here. Galatians chapter 5. Here in this passage, we are seeing the struggle that's before us. I like little babies in church. If you don't bother me a little, not at all. Someone says, How old should kids be before you bring them out to church? Right there it is, right there. But they don't understand it. We don't know that. The Bible says the word never returns void. No telling what kind of help he's getting there to today. <laughs> Galatians chapter 5, beginning with verse 16. This, I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Here's the struggle of war. For the flesh struggles, or lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that you would. But if you be led of the Spirit, you are not under the law. So there's the struggle. Every morning you get up, either your flesh is going to be in control or the Spirit is going to be in control. And if you don't determine, it's going to be a tug of war. You're going to be up and down, in and out, up and down, in and out. We're even told what we're up against here. Look at this. Verse 19. The works of the flesh are revealed, are manifest, which are these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. But then in verse 22, we're told what the fruit of the Spirit is. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Which one, which one of those conditions do you find yourself in most of the time? Are you at peace? Are you filled with the love of God? Is there joy in your soul? Or are you mad at the world? Filled with hatred, anger, 
and patience. This is one of the most important passages in the Bible because it reveals what we're up against, the struggle that's going on within us. The good news is it's a battle that can be won through God. And it's a battle that God doesn't expect us to fight in our own strength. He will empower us. He will encourage us. He will deliver us. But it will only happen when we're willing to walk in the Spirit, starting our day with God. Two things we must do. Let God be in control of our lives. Amen? Amen. That's number one. Submit yourselves to Him. Be willing to do things God's way. Because if you don't, that struggle, that tug of war is never going to end. 2016 is going to bring much the same as 2015. Up and down, in and out. On the map top, in the valley. Just give it to Him. And then number two, we got to stop feeding our flesh. Let your flesh know that God's in charge and that your flesh has been put on notice. That your flesh is no longer going to be in charge. Let your flesh know it. We've got to get our flesh under control. And we do that by letting God be in control. Romans 8.13 But if you through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the flesh, ye shall live. I resolve to be more disciplined with my walk with God. I like what Paul said. 1 Corinthians 9.27 He said, but I discipline my body. I make it my slave. I keep it under control, training it like an athlete to do what it should. Otherwise, I fear that after I have preached to others, I myself should be disqualified, become a castaway. Just like an athlete, we have to train our bodies to obey us. This matter of self-discipline is, is also has to do with getting into good spiritual routines, especially at the beginning of the new year. Get into the habit of starting your day with prayer. Get into the habit of having daily devotionals. Get into the habit or routine of coming to church. Get into the habit of worshiping the Lord. Yeah. We tend to be creatures of habit. And if we can discipline ourselves to develop good, healthy routines, it will make a major difference in our lives. It might be getting up a half hour earlier. I like staying in bed. I like to get it down to the last second that I can then God will wake me up. And I might as well get up because I ain't getting back to sleep. I'll just sit there staring at the wall. God's trying to encourage me to get up and to start my day in prayer. Reading the Word. That's a good habit to get into. Picking up your Bible before you pick up your cell phone. That's a good habit to get into. A fourth resolution is this. I resolve to use discernment in the decisions that I make. In the course of the year, I'll talk to a lot of folks about their lives and the decisions they make. And the one thing that always gets me is just how messed up the lives of so many people get because of the bad decisions that they make. Over and over. Folks tell me, oh man, I, I blew it, I messed up. I'm in a bad place right now. Now we all make mistakes. But after a while, we should learn from those mistakes and then not repeat them. Yes. But you run into folks, year after year, it's the same thing. They're running with the wrong crowd. Five years ago, they're still running with the wrong crowd. They get involved with the wrong girl, the wrong guy, and they're still involved with the wrong person. They get tuned up and do something stupid, like get themselves locked up, mouth off to a cop, get a DWI, they start the new year riding a bicycle. They got warrants out for them. Fines they haven't paid. They get into fights they don't even remember. They quit their job because they got a hangover and they're having a bad day. I could go on and on telling you some of the stories people have told me about bad days. I wasn't thinking I shouldn't have quit my job. I, I don't got no, no job now. And they wonder why their life is a mess. And it's because they keep making decisions apart from God. Listen, God is in control. And it'd be a good idea to figure out what He wants you to do. Besides the fact that once you get saved, once you receive Christ as your personal Savior, your life isn't your own anymore. Right. We now belong to God. Amen. Thank you. 
1 Corinthians 6.19 You are not your own, for you are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. So that makes it real simple. The world's crowd has an excuse because they don't know no better. But the moment you receive Christ, you belong to Him now. Yes. And we do well to find out what the Father has planned for our lives. Here's the thing. We have no excuse for the bad decisions and the wrong choices we make. Why? Because as a child of God, we've got the Holy Spirit dwelling within us. And He promises to guide us and to teach us and to direct our path. It don't get no better than that. Psalm 32, 8. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with my eyes. Put another way, one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit is discernment, which is like a, a built-in radar within us. It's the Holy Spirit warning us of danger or nudging us when we're messing up or about to mess up and giving us the wisdom we need to make right decisions. God will do all that and more if we use discernment. If a situation don't feel right, it probably isn't right, and it's probably the Holy Spirit trying to tell you, be careful, be careful. When we get off course, when our lives are going in the wrong direction, the Holy Spirit is like a spiritual GPS that tells us, wrong way, wrong way, turn around, turn around, wrong way. We can either heed the Holy Spirit's warning or just keep on going down that path of destruction. It's our choice. Here's the thing. The Holy Spirit's not going to force us to do right, to live right, to make right decisions. He's not going to force it. We have a free will, which means we can either choose to do right or just continue the way our lives have been going. The Holy Spirit can be grieved. The Holy Spirit can be quenched or simply ignored. If you want to start this year by making fewer mistakes and bad decisions, then resolve to use discernment in the decisions you make. One last resolution. And it's that so far we've got, I resolve to be more determined in my efforts. I resolve to be more devoted to the things of God. I resolve to be more disciplined in my walk with God. I resolve to use discernment in the decisions I make. And now this last one. I resolve to delight in the spiritual journey that I'm on. This is so important. It's talking about having joy for the journey. Man, there's nothing more discouraging than running into some miserable, unhappy, poochy lip Christian that looks like they've been sucking on lemons all day. Sometimes they'll knock on your door. Excuse me, would you like to have what I have? Not a chance, pal! I'm afraid it might be contagious. We're trying to reach a world in darkness with the gospel, but nobody's going to want what you have if you seem miserable. Amen. Yeah, amen. amen. I mentioned Wednesday that this fellow that I've been trying to reach at a supermarket, he said, you know, you're a pastor and you don't smile enough. No, I could have gotten all, what are you talking about? I could have got all indignant. I could have punched him for Jesus. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> I could have tried to defend the fact, well, I'm a very serious person. And you know, the Bible says Jesus was a man of sorrow acquainted with grief. I could have went through all that. I started to say, well, you know, I just woke up. I haven't had a cup. I said, ah, that's not going to work either. <laughs> but here's the thing. I don't feel that way, but it doesn't matter how I feel. It's how he feels. If that's, if that's the persona that I'm giving off to him, unless I start smiling a little bit more, I'm not going to be able to reach him. So I took it under advice. I said, you know what? Maybe you're right. Good resolution for the coming year. Try to smile. Yeah. It's something to think about. How people perceive us. How our children perceive us. How our neighbors perceive us. How our co-workers perceive us. Has a lot to do with whether we're going to reach them or not. Our testimony will do more good in reaching a lost and dying world than anything we can tell them through the Bible. I'm happy in the Lord. 
I'm full of this joy, but maybe in public I'm holding back a little bit. Maybe I'm deep in thought, whatever it may be. These are things we have to be aware of. Or maybe I'm just not aware of what I look like. You get to a certain age and you try to avoid mirrors at all costs. Amen? <laughs> or, you, or you turn the lighting down a little bit. Same thing with people taking your picture. Someone will take your picture. Hey, look. Man, who is that old guy? Man, that's not me, is it? This last resolution took me the longest to figure out because my church background was so serious and so fundamental. If something was funny, it must be from the devil. Like that water boy. That's from the devil. Sports are of the devil. TV's of the devil. And you find that you're miserable. Though you're keeping the letter of the law, you're just miserable. No, join it. There's a group called the Stoics. And the pilgrims were a part of this thing. They would only wear drab colors, blacks and browns, because anything that was a bright color was considered evil. And they wouldn't laugh a whole lot because well, then it must be something evil. And that's the way they lived their lives. Just like on autopilot. God has opened my eyes to the beauty of life. And he's given me joy for the journey. Amen. And I'm thankful for every moment he gives me, whether it's good or bad. Yeah. I mentioned in Sunday school, our heater went out. Our furnace went out yesterday. It's supposed to get down to 16 degrees. I didn't kick the dog. It crossed my mind, but he was cold as I was. I didn't mess with him. But the first thought is, oh, God, how could you let this happen? Then I just started praising God anyway. Put on a couple extra sweaters, was walking around the house with a wool hat. And prayed all night saying, Lord, you know the time it isn't so good for this to happen this time of year. Called up my service contract. Would you believe they sent somebody out on a Sunday morning? That's just not done. I was looking at this guy making sure he wasn't an angel. He may have been. Came out at 7 o'clock this morning. They don't do that. Nobody makes service calls at 7 o'clock in the morning. Then I got a little antsy thinking, well, what if this guy, what if I'm late for church? Who's going to preach? What if this thing goes on for a while? What if he gives me some bad news and i got to preach to try to put a smile on my face? Fifteen minutes later, he fixed it. Amen. You talk about having a hallelujah. Amen. Rebecca and I were just rejoicing, just praising God. Amen. It don't get no better than that. He had it all under control. Amen. Glory. Amen. Yeah. Jehovah Jireh. Listen, what I'm trying to say, it's God's intention that we enjoy the ride because it'll soon be over. I'm 58 years old, 59, something like that. It took me a long time to figure out that there's nothing wrong with enjoying the journey, having a good time. I know there'll be times when we're going to go through sorrow and pain, and there will be times when it feels like the sun will never shine again, days when we wonder if we'll ever laugh again. Maybe this past year was one of those kind of years for you. There will be days of darkness and despair. But praise God, we are told in Psalm 30, verse 5, Weeping may last for the night, but joy cometh in the morning. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. Amen! Joy cometh in the morning! God wants us to delight in the Christian life. How do I know that? Because of all the passages that tell me so. Psalm 37, 4, Delight thyself in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Just by delighting the things of God, God's going to give you the icing on the cake. How about that? Psalm 40, verse 8. I will delight. I delight to do thy will, O God. Yea, thy law is within my heart. Psalm 119, verse 16. I will delight myself in thy statutes. I will not forget thy word. Those are just a few of the many passages that show us that God wants us to delight in the things of God. You know what's a good verse to start your day with? Psalm 118, verse 24, Brother Steve. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. <laughs> but that'll jumpstart your spiritual engine right there. This is the day He's given us. It might be our last day. Who knows? Rejoice in it. 
Can you imagine if it was your last day and you went out of this world with a frown on your face or a snarl on your lips? Think about that. Mrs. Smith, we lost her last year. I don't think I've ever seen her without a smile on her face. I don't think I ever saw her without, without a song on her lips. Happy. Never saw her mad or cross. She was like my hero. Because sometimes I'll get up like a bear. Halfway through the day, I'm just like growling. And then I realize, man, i got to be more like her. If you've got the joy of the Lord in you, that's how you'll live your life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a terrible thing when this world's crowd brings in the new year with more shouting going on than God's people. If anyone has a reason to shout, it's believers, Christians. Right. I mean, don't get too excited. When you get saved, all your sins are forgiven, past, present, and future. Don't get too excited about that or the fact that you've got God living inside you or that your name is written in the book of life and that when you die, you're going right to heaven and you'll never have to fear the fires of hell. Don't get too excited about that, that you've been adopted into the family of God, that we now have a heavenly Father that loves us, protects us, and keeps us as the apple of His eye. Listen, I'll close with this. If you've lost your joy, if you don't got much to shout about, if maybe this year has been one of those rough years for you, ask God to restore your joy. That's what David did. David had lost his joy. He was flatter than day old soda. Psalm 51 8. Make me to hear joy and gladness. Verse 12. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. Each day I ask God, restore to me my joy. And then I pray this prayer. I'll say, Lord, anoint me with the oil of gladness and clothe me with garments of praise. That's in the Bible. I just pray that because if it ain't there, I want it there. Spiritually, God will just anoint me with that oil of gladness. Make me realize what i got to be thankful for. He'll clothe me in garments of praise. Resolve to delight in the spiritual journey. Five resolutions for this coming year. Now in a moment's time, we're going to celebrate the Lord's Supper. And the Bible says,